haptics. Natural interaction. If you remember from our last video, we've found that multimodal systems tend to require a different approach than traditional keyboards and mouse inputs. If you recall, modalities can be inputs and outputs, such as a press of a button on your controller or the vibration feedback you feel from your phone. Multimodality then is the combination of these multiple modalities. Now we're going to look at the article, Multimodal Interfaces That Process What Comes Naturally. This article explains to us that typical multimodal communication has us speak, shift our eyes, and move our bodies, rather than use a keyboard or mouse. For mobile systems, such as your phone, reliance on a keyboard or mouse limits our ability to interact with that system. In this sense, we must take a different approach than what we might use for a standard GUI or graphical user interface. Sensors such as microphones and cameras help us augment voice and touch in such a system. It might be possible to use the additional senses and outputs in order to add touch and pressure to continually increase the bandwidth of touch in such a system in order to further augment such interactions. The writers S. Oviat and P. Cohen believe that one of the most important reasons for developing multimodal interfaces is its ability to make devices far more accessible to a wider range of users. One theme that we keep on running into that having a multimodal interface does not necessarily mean that, that every input is going to be used. Part of having that multimodal system, those multiple modalities, is to allow the user to pick different modalities while ignoring others if they so choose. You as a user might not want to use a speech command on your phone while you're sitting in a classroom lecture or you're riding the bus. For this reason, it's necessary to give users the ability to choose how they interact with a device. On the other hand, the advantage of having multiple modalities is that this information can be fused together in an effort to reduce errors in interpretation from the users. An additional advantage of having these multiple modalities is that it also reduces the stress put on individual modalities. Looking at it from a human perspective, switching modalities can reduce constant stress on one's vocal cords or hands. You don't always need to talk to your phone and you don't always need to type on your phone. You as a user have the flexibility to choose how you want to interact with your technology. As one final note, the authors of this article tell us that as much as we use modalities that seem natural for humans, we must be aware of a user's wish for privacy. Just because it's normal to communicate through voice doesn't mean you always want to communicate by voice. Discrete communication should always be an option when designing a multimodal system. So with that, be aware that natural interaction is quite important to how a device is designed. But also be aware that the way that we communicate with our devices is not always, for example, the way that we normally communicate. That'll be this video for now. If you have any questions, do feel free to ask in the comments. Do check out the rest of the videos in this series. And if you did enjoy this video, please go ahead and hit that like button. If for some reason you did not like the video, hit dislike. And no matter where you are in the world, have a good day, have a good morning, have a good night. Bye bye.